Well, hello, Canadian Campaholic here, coming to you from my untidy basement with a video log update. Uh, it is early February now. In fact, today is Groundhog Day, and the majority of the giant rats <laughs> that predict the weather uh, stated that it will be an early spring, and I'm certainly hoping for that. Uh, we are over halfway through the winter hiatus now. Uh, our trailer has been fully winterized since mid-November. Um, everything that needed to be set up in terms of winterization is all set to go. Um, in terms of planning for the 2020 camping season, we've got a few reservations booked already. We've got two booked for May. Uh, we've got a couple booked in June. Um, and then uh, soon I'll be booking something for July. A uh, lot of people uh, getting used to the new reservation system for Ontario Parks. It's certainly a, a little bit different, but so far I've had no major issues with it. But as usual, uh, availability is, uh, is drying up very, very quickly. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, uh, we should be camping by early April, fingers crossed. So we're a little bit over two months left in the winter hiatus. And I have to say, this winter hiatus has gone by pretty quick so far. Uh, work has been very busy. Uh, we had the Christmas season or the holiday season, and that was uh, pretty good. Um, and lots of things going on. Um, some updates. For me personally, um, my wife is expecting our third child uh, coming up in July, so that's going to be <laughs> interesting. Um, I've never really gone camping with uh, a newborn before. Our daughter was, I want to say, a little bit under two years old when we started camping. Um, well, started this range of camping. I've camped when I was a kid, uh, so that was different, um, but I think the one great thing about having another baby is that that's another kid that is uh, going to enjoy camping for quite a long time and maybe when my son who is 10 and my daughter who is 8 when they get to a point where they don't want to come camping anymore hopefully that doesn't happen too soon we'll have another little tyke uh, that'll want to come along uh, with us as well um, the other uh, big development and update which happened actually in August was that we got a dog uh, we adopted a Great Dane puppy uh, by the name of Gracie. She's now seven months old, weighs 95 pounds. Uh, she's a big girl. So the combination of the baby situation, the giant dog situation, has really got my wife and I starting to think about the bigger trailer situation again. And in just a few moments, I'm going to show you the trailer that we're really interested in and thinking of and talk a little bit about why uh, that is. But this has really um, put a fire back in my belly. Uh, those of you that uh, follow this channel know that uh, last June, we upgraded our tow vehicle. We moved from a minivan and went up to a um, half-ton truck uh, that can tow up to 10,000 pounds. And the idea behind that was not only to make it safer and easier to tow our 3,500-pound trailer, well, it's actually 2,800 pounds uh, unloaded, um, but also we wanted to get something bigger. Um, but the combination of, of flipping a vehicle that we'd only been financing for two years and the fact that I've only had the new travel trailer for a couple of years, um, my credit kind of took a hit from those uh, expenditures, shall we say, and the bank kindly said no. So uh, that was a little disappointing, but we got to enjoy having this great uh, tow vehicle and it made the whole towing experience uh, so much better. But now that baby number three is on the way, we've got this dog that could end up being around 130 pounds, uh, we have to think about a, a, a bigger trailer. So our goal this year is to pay off some of our debts um, uh, to get my credit into a, a better position, and it's already improving quite a bit, which is great, because probably towards the end of the season, if all goes well, knock on wood, um, we want to look at... at um, upgrading to a much bigger trailer. Um, again, I'll show you the details on the trailer in a minute, but it's going to be tricky because we we financed our trailer on a 20-year term, which is what a lot of people will do with RVs. Um, and so even though we've had it for a couple of years, we've barely made a dent in the total cost of the trailer. So if you get a good trade-in of, say, $15,000 for it, which is optimistic. I mean, I only paid $16,000 for it, brand new in... Uh, um, 2017, um, you're still looking at five or six thousand dollars that would still be owed on top of the price of the trailer that we want. So the trailer we want is about thirty-six thousand dollars brand new. Um, 
tack on to that the extra amount of money, you know, you're in excess of 40 grand at that point. So it's really a question of whether or not my credit can take it. From a cash flow perspective, we absolutely can. But when you buy an RV, it's not really seen as a necessity. It's a, it's a leisure vehicle. It's a luxury. And so they tend to be a little more stringent in, in how they review credit and how they approve it. So fingers crossed, because a, a bigger rig really, really uh, would be great. So the first trailer on our list is this one. This is a Bullet 247 BHS. Nice floor plan there with the queen size bed. Definitely love the U-shaped dinette. You've got the nice big bunk beds at the back and a good kitchen with lots of floor space for the dog. Um, I think one of the things that really appeals to me about this trailer, of course, is that it's aluminum framed with fiberglass sidewalls. So leaks uh, and rot is much less of a concern. You don't have anywhere near as much wood. Um, you've also got a nice slide out, which makes a, a big, big difference. And it's still a, a bunkhouse. This is the 247 BHS. It's about 25 feet long, weighs about 5,000 pounds, just over 5,000 pounds, and uh, retails from our favorite dealer for around $33,000 plus taxes. Uh, love the fact that both kids get a window there. This particular unit does come with an outside kitchen, so you've got your two gas burners and your fridge there. Really handy. We can maybe forego the naphtha stove finally. Uh, interior is gorgeous. I love what they're doing with the 2020 models with the really uh, pale uh, weathered wood effect uh, on the floor and the walls and the nice light grays. You know, the old days of the dark wood is really starting to go away. A uh, nice L-shaped kitchen there, which I know the wife will really enjoy. Love the U-shaped dinette. Lots of space to sit around, and as you can see here, breaks down into a really nice bed. Um, it's great, though, because with the U-shape, you can have a lot more people sit around it for dinner or play a game of poker or something to that effect. Uh, wife loves the kitchen. Nice backsplash, a nice uh, deep-set sink there. We've got an oven and uh, a nice microwave. Got a range hood. Massive fridge. Um, for the kids, the bunks, huge selling feature. These things are rated up to 300 pounds. Each kid uh, gets two windows plus USB and power outlets and shelves to put uh, devices and books and things of that nature. So that's a huge plus. And, of course, the, the bathroom is, is pretty nice. So all in all, this is a pretty great trailer. Second option for us is a 29-foot travel trailer, uh, much longer. This one comes with a couch as well as the dinette. Very similar to the last one that we saw, but this is a 29-foot unit, weighs 6,000 pounds, and retails for about uh, $35,000. So a little bit more money, definitely a much longer trailer, but same kind of idea. You know, you've got the aluminum framing, the fiberglass sidewalls, you've got the slide-out, the kids get um, lots and lots of windows. Uh, outside kitchen on this one is a little bit different. This one doesn't have the uh, stove but you've got a nice sink and a fridge there to use. Uh, something that really gets me nerding out about this one is the tongue jack has a power stabilizing system for the tongue jack and all the stabilizer jacks, so that is amazing. Um, interior, very spacious. Again, the pale cabinetry. You've got the nice queen-size bed up there, the L-shaped kitchen. Um, but the big difference with this one is uh, with this particular model, um, you've got the couch. And the couch is something that, surprisingly, I would really enjoy because as much as I love sitting by the campfire, at the end of a tiring day, having a nice, comfortable couch to sit on would make a big difference. This one's got the booth dinette. I'm not as big of a fan of the booth dinettes, but this one looks like it could easily accommodate four grown adults, so that could be a little bit better. And, of course, the kitchen, still really nice. My wife loves the style of the kitchen, which would be really, really nice. I think the big factor that I have to think of between these two trailers is, of course, the length. When you're getting up into the 29 to 33 foot range, that's going to limit the number of campsites that you can comfortably get into. Whereas the 25 foot trailer does give you a little more flexibility. But look at the difference you're getting in space for not a huge difference in the amount of money. So definitely going to have to mull this over and plan for the future. Well, that about wraps up this video. Not much else to report. We'll continue booking reservations and uh, hopefully get out there and do some camping in the next couple of months. 
Uh, I'll still be going out to check on the trailer every few weeks, and uh, maybe I'll throw together a quick video about what I look for uh, when I go and check on the trailer. I actually do think I have a video about winter maintenance that covers most of that, but what the heck, we'll throw together another video. But anyway, I hope you're staying warm and enjoying the winter season to the best of your abilities and looking and dreaming forward to the 2020 camping season. We'll talk to you later.